Welcome back to another episode, and I'm your host, Derek Asante, and I'm happy to be back with you uh, with more energy than I have had in recent times. Now, you know, went through a little bit of my, of my, with regard to my health, but uh, a bounce back is always good. The weather is beautiful outside, and I'm enjoying it. Now, this episode, if you haven't been following along, I would like it if you went back and listened to the series that I'm building here, which is wrapped around um, the 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene. So I've already, you know, kind of summarized law number one and law number two. This here is law number three. Now, the idea behind going through this book is because the laws are so simple and effective Yet you can make it as complicated as you want it to be, but they're all applicable to almost every situation that you might find yourself in. And so that's the benefit of going through these. So I'm trying to simplify and summarize the book for you law by law so you can actually take it with you and make something of them. Now, in today's episode, we're talking about law number three, which talks about concealing your intentions. That's what this law is about. What does that mean? And when you think about that, a lot of people love to hear their own voice. I'm sure we all have them. You have people around you who talk a lot more than they listen. It's not their fault. It's who they are. They're built that way. They can change it, though. They can change it if they wanted to. But that's not a choice that they're willing to make. Because they love the sound of their voice. The power is actually in those who listen more than they speak. Right? And we'll get into that in this law. We'll talk more about that. So stay tuned. I'm going to give you some examples of how to apply this in a business sense or setting. As well as in your social setting in the political space as well. So how you can apply these laws in your own situation. And I'll give you some examples that hopefully will help you kind of jumpstart how to use these laws, especially this one here, law number three, conceal your intention. Now, the law says that anyone who blabs about their plans will find themselves and their plan failing, which is true. Have you ever had you know a moment where you celebrated too early, right? They say you, you counted your eggs too early uh, before they hatched. Right. I hope I'm not butchering some of these cliches, but you get the point. The point is sometimes we celebrate too early. You talk about sports. A team might hit. Let's use basketball because that's sport that I'm more familiar with. Now, a team might hit, you know, a a clutch shot. But after they hit their shot, they celebrated. And guess what? There was maybe point eight seconds left in the game. The other team calls a timeout. They set their play up. And they get the shot off. And guess what? They hit the shot. Ouch. Like, we've all seen this. Right? Or, or I'll give you another example. You had a plan, a business plan, or an idea. And you told a few people about it. Yeah, I plan on doing this, and this is going to be my launch date. And this is the, the vision around it. A month later, before you were even close to actually developing your idea... Somebody launches your idea, and now you can't launch. We've seen this. Copyrights, businesses, ideas get launched because someone spoke about them too early to the wrong people. And the reason why I bring that up is because you don't know the intentions of those that you're sharing your vision, your plan, your goals, your objectives with. You have no idea what their intentions are. Right? And so that's the key. You have to conceal your intentions and allow those that you're, you know, communicating with to share their intentions. I know, I know it's not the best. It it seems like it's a little tricky and, and a little sneaky, but this is the way of the world. Right. So keep that in mind. Just concealing your intentions will allow you to preserve and be more mysterious, which means you're going to have a lot more impact and have more influence later on. Right. So don't forget that anyone who blabs about their plans will find them to fail. But how can you use this principle in your daily lives? Right. In today's society, I gave you two examples preliminary. 
right? So keep that in mind. You can use it in the in those settings. And those are just examples for you to keep in mind. Now, concealing your intentions means keeping your goals, right? And your dreams close to your chest. And then you work towards them every single day. Every single day that you have breath in your lungs, you're going to work towards those goals and those objectives. And that should be your goal. That should be your intention, right? So you keep working on it. Keep working on it. And as you get closer to establishing yourself, maybe that's a good time to begin establishing a team, right? Put some people around you that's going to help you accomplish the task or the objectives that you've been working towards all this time. That's the key. Now, this law allows you, right? And really, it's all about the importance of discretion. Keeping your plans and your intentions to yourself. How disciplined can you be to do that? Not for anybody else, but for you. How disciplined can you be to keep your mouth shut? That's really what it's saying. Because a lot is about understanding when you reveal your plans, you're giving others the opportunity to counter them and the potential to prevent you from achieving them. And I'll give you some examples in the, in the business world. It could mean not announcing your plans, right, for expansion until they're ready in motion. In order to prevent competitors from taking similar actions and stealing your market share, I call these folks haters, but they are intelligent. They're smart. Everybody needs haters. You need them because the naysayers are the ones that are going to inspire you and motivate you. Right? But don't under, under, underestimate your haters. Or really, it will be the end of you. The minute you start to take them for granted and you underestimate them and the power that they actually have, that's when you fall. Now, let's move on to the political setting, right? And in that space, it could mean that revealing your plans or strategy, right, until it's ready in action. Like if you have a policy or something that you're trying to get across or a motion that you're trying to pass, Get the wheels moving before you get to that, you know, that meeting or that board um, voting table and, and, you know, presenting your idea or pitching it. Get some things in motion. Right. So that you can maintain the element of surprise. So when you show up, you're not saying I'm about to start. You can say here are the stats to what I've already done. Right. And at that point, that's when you potentially gain an advantage over your opponents, right? Or your rivals. So that's another way that you can use it in the political space, if that's where you're navigating. So it can be applied in so many different settings. Now, how about some real life scenarios? Let's look at Steve Jobs. Rest in peace. Right? You look at Steve Jobs and the team at Apple. They were known for the secrecy and the ability to keep their plans under wraps. No one knew what was happening, what was coming down the pipeline until they wanted to reveal it. And because they controlled information that they were about to reveal so well, this allowed them to announce new products and services that were innovative and often had a huge impact on the market. Apple changed the world. You can hate them or you can love them. But the fact still remains. They changed the world and not just the tech world. And that's simply because they made sure we didn't know anything about what was happening with their product until they wanted us to know. Now, when you shift gears into the entertainment industry, this is important. Let's look at something that we're all familiar with, J.K. Rowling, the author of Harry Potter series. If you don't know what Harry Potter is, um, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to get help and, you know, get someone to help dig you from under that rock that you've been hiding under. But she's the biggest thing, right, in the writing industry, just because of how popular uh, that book series got. Now, she kept the plot of the final book under wraps for many years. 
for many, 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 many years. And that is what helped her build this anticipation of the book, right? And the release of the final book. Harry Potter and the uh, Death Hollows, a cultural event success, hands down. I don't even know the stories. Like, I don't read them. I haven't watched all the movies, but I know the impact because it's everywhere and I can't not hear about it. That's when you know someone's got a cultural event success with their stuff, right? So that's just something, another example to give you there. Now, this is my goat. I've used him before in an example, but I mean, he's so great that I have to keep using him. Uh, in the sports industry, you already know what it is. We're talking about Michael Jordan. Now, he was known for his secrecy his secrecy um, because he kept his thoughts and his thought process and his strategies going into every single game to himself. Right. This helped him maintain an element of surprise and dominance over his opponents. Now, I've seen many clips, many documentaries and other people have spoken about this man. Um, you know, they call him, I think, Black Jesus. Now, I want to put it out there that it's been documented that Jordan would go as far as creating a fictional conflict between him and an opponent he was about to face in his mind. That way, it would give him the edge he needed to dominate that opponent on game night. So think about that. That means his opponent could have been the, the nicest person on planet Earth. But you can't necessarily go to war against a nice person. That makes you look like the evil doer. So he has to fabricate some of these situations. Sometimes it's just as simple as the way he looked at me when we were walking down, you know, the, the hallway of the to, to the locker rooms or, or whatever. Or maybe he made a comment about somebody else. And I'm taking it and saying, well, no, you're making a comment about, you know, all players. And maybe I'm I'm interpreting it as you were talking about me, right? In 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 coded language so i'm gonna take that and process it and say you know what next time i see you it's on and it could be as simple as that it could be as simple as you know what i didn't like the way you crossed me over the last game so now there's a vendetta i'm gonna hold on to it every time i see you we're gonna play at this level that i want to play at right and so that's what he did to make sure he maintained his dominance over his opponents and some, some of these so-called nice players have even said, I don't understand why he was so angry with me. I didn't do anything with, to him or I've never met him before. So where is it coming from? And that's when you hear Michael himself kind of allude to the fact that there's no friends between these lines once he steps on the court. And that's how it should be, right? So you maintain your leverage when no one knows your next move. But you. Those are some examples that I think how concealing your intentions can be beneficial for both the personal and professional um, settings, right? But understand that it's also important to remember that this law doesn't mean that you shouldn't completely close off and not share your plans with anybody. That's not what it's saying. It's about understanding the importance of discretion and knowing when to reveal your plans. That's the key right there knowing when to reveal your plans and when to keep them hidden. It's also about understanding that by keeping your plans and your intentions concealed, you maintain the element of surprise and potentially gain the advantage over others. I hope you found this episode eventful and beneficial. Again, if you're watching this on YouTube, don't be afraid to just hit the subscribe button and the like, give it a thumbs up if you appreciate the content that I'm giving you every single week. And that's all for today's episode. And I hope that you gained some valuable insights about law number three, conceal your intentions and how it can be applied to both your personal and professional circumstances. Remember, speak less, listen more, and think immensely. Thanks for listening. Until next episode, love, peace, and nappiness. Mm -hmm.